This video is sponsored by PCBWay, more on them later. At this point, I've done quite a number of home console mods, and there are a lot of home console mods you can do nowadays. Yet, surprisingly, there isn't much for one of the most popular home consoles of all time, the Wii. Yeah, you've been able to do software mods for ages, but I'm more interested in the hardware side of things. So when I came across this HDMI mod, I grabbed it along with a new clear blue shell. But was it worth it? First off, your Wii needs to be a very specific revision. One of these guys. I only learned that after getting halfway through my first attempt at this mod. So to save you a huge amount of frustration, before you even buy this mod, check out the circle number on the motherboard by taking out the clock battery. If it's not one of these, it won't work. Wait, hold on a second. I did end up learning later on that this does work with just about any model of Wii, except for the Wii Mini, but I'll talk about that more later on. Anyways, shout out to Nick at Goodwill because he let me use his screwdriver, not mine, his screwdriver, to take apart a whole wall worth of Wii's just so I could find one compatible revision. There's a lot of launch model Wii's out there. If you have the right revision of Wii and you want to do this mod, you'll also need to be pretty comfortable with a soldering iron. This is definitely a more intense soldering job that I couldn't have done without my microscope. In general, you're gonna need patience while doing this mod, especially if you decide to use a brand new shell like me. But we'll talk more about the shell's quality later on. Nintendo, in their infinite wisdom, decided to use a bunch of different screws. Screws with many different lengths and girths using three different size bits for a wide variety of confusion. According to this eBay listing I found, it's at least eight different types of screws for a total of 52 screws. Why? Thankfully, even if you decide to keep your original shell, you still have to take this entire thing apart for this mod. Once you've done that, you need to split this board into two pieces exactly like this and solder the HDMI to these pins here. If you're wondering why my board looks used, it's because I already did this part on the first Wii that I got that wasn't the right revision. From there, we can remove the capacitor labeled C43 and solder the ribbon cable around the RVL chip here. Again, mine is singed because I had to take it off of the other motherboard once I realized my mistakes. This part was slightly difficult, mostly because I had trouble lining the pins up both times I attempted this, but it did end up being okay this time. Just take your time and make sure you don't bridge any of the pins. Now we can place the rest of the mod's board down and solder it to the AV port's pins. That part was pretty easy for me though. While it is pretty straightforward, connecting the board to the ribbon cable was a bit of a pain. I had to press down on the board to keep it lined up with the ribbon cable, and there was a lot of accidental bridging but I was able to get it after a while. The last little bit of soldering is connecting TP27 to this pad pad over here. And no, I did not stutter. It is literally labeled the pad pad. And also you will have to provide your own wire. This one didn't come with one, but that is all the soldering. Now we just have to trim a few things up before we put it all back together. Starting with trimming this part off of the screw post without actually removing the screw post itself. Then trim down this part of the shell just a wee bit until the mini HDMI sits in there nicely. On the other half of the shell, you only have to flush cut this little bit off here. All of this can be done with a pair of flush cutters and maybe a little bit of sanding if you want to. Now all you have to do is put it all back together. Hopefully you organized all your screws and remember where you took them from. If you want to follow along with me as I did all of this, I will have a tutorial up on the second channel, Jake64. It's a very long video, so be prepared for that. Now it's time to tell you how I really feel about this. Starting with the shell. As of right now, aftermarket Wii shells are not the highest quality. It looks great now that it's all said and done, but you definitely want to be careful when you're trimming one of these up or else it might crack. I didn't have any issues other than this black piece just not fitting well, so I ended up swapping it for the original and it was fine. Plus, these covers are a little loose, but most Wii covers are loose, broken, or just straight up missing anyway. But let's finally talk about the HDMI mod. This has been a bit hard to review. Like I said earlier, I thought this was only compatible with the later revisions of the Wii. Turns out I just bought a ripoff of the Arthurmus mod off of AliExpress. I wasn't aware that this was his HDMI mod until researching stuff for the script. And his logo has been staring me in the face the whole time. This is an open source project and he isn't upset, but I would still way rather link to the original creator, so that's what's in the description. Plus, buying it from Arthurmus will allow you to get the other flex cable you need to install it on the earlier revisions of the Wii. His website is currently out of stock, but since this is completely open source, 
use, you can have this mod made through today's sponsor, PCBWay. Just take the files and bill of materials from the GitHub, and PCBWay can make the board and even install most of its components for you if you want. But you can do even more than that with PCBWay, like 3D printing, CNC machining, injection molding, and of course, PCB fabrication and assembly. They were the ones who helped me complete the Frog Boy color project I did in a video not too long ago. I couldn't have done it without them. They've been doing this for 10 years now, and I think you'll be satisfied with their services. So if you want to give PCBWay a shot, check them out in the link in the description. And thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. And while being able to install this on the other models of Wii makes this a lot easier, it still will take the same amount of time and effort, just without the stress of trying to find the right Wii. And if I'm being brutally honest, in my opinion, I just don't think it's worth it. Playing a little Wii Sports Tennis, I wasn't that impressed. It doesn't upscale anything, which I knew going into it. I was just hoping it was going to look a little better after all the effort I put into installing it. But I was just coping, really. Plus, when comparing it to the cheapo external HDMI adapter, it looks exactly the same to me. I completely understand that a lot of people would rather have the HDMI inside of their console instead of having this chonker hanging out the back. It does have extra settings that the adapter doesn't though, since the mod is based off of GC video. And you can use an IR remote to navigate it or just use a GameCube controller. The one big downside for me is I could not get this to work with my Elgato unless I used a specific HDMI splitter, you know, the kind of thing that you had to do with the PS3 to get capture cards to work with it. I don't know if there's copyright protection on this mod or what, but that was the only way it would show up in my Elgato. Straight to the TV, no problem. I don't understand. It was incredibly frustrating trying to get the capture for this. For me, I'd rather use the $5 adapter instead of spending $80 and having to put the work in myself. But I didn't mod this console for me. I made it for my charity event to sell to one of you guys. If you're watching this after the event, you missed out big time. Sorry. So if it's worth it to you to spend the money and put the effort in, or spend even more money to have someone else do it for you, you should do it. Because at the end of the day, this mod does exactly what it was advertised to do. I'm just going to stick to playing my Wii games on my Wii U or on my Wii through my RetroTINK 5X Pro. But what do you guys think of this Wii HDMI kit? Have you installed one of these? Do you want to give it a try? Let me know in those comments down below. But that's about it for me. So like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later, guys. Arthurmus? Arthremus? I want to say his name right because I don't want to be mean and I don't want to sound like an idiot, but that's never stopped me before.